Well, some of the largest mega fires across the Northwest have been happening in Washington and Oregon. And one thing they have in common is they exploded because of strong winds from the east, sometimes compared to the Santa Ana winds in Southern California. Our sister station in Seattle talked with uh, several people involved in a study of those winds aimed at helping firefighters now determine our risks all across the state. For the Northwest, September was a month from hell. In Bonnie Lake, Washington, the Sumner Grade Fire burned two homes and threatened hundreds of others in Pierce County. In Oregon, a million acres went up in a string of fires that would eventually involve the Portland metro area. Homes burned, people were killed. These just recent examples. The 1902 Yakult burn in southwest Washington extended into Oregon and stood as Washington's largest wildfire for over a century. In 1933, the Tillamook burn became a fast-moving nightmare. These fires all had a particular key ingredient in common. They were driven by hot, dry winds coming from the east. The 2020 fires, especially the ones in western Oregon last year, were so consistent with everything we know about those historical fires, the 1902 Yakult burn, the 1933 Tillamook burn. Those, the Tillamook burn burned 200,000 acres in a 24-hour period, driven by east wind, and the Yakult burn traveled 30 miles in 36 hours. Dan Donato and Josh Halofsky are fire research scientists with the Washington Department of Natural Resources. They are part of a study of those east winds. The Washington-Oregon state line is a political boundary. The winds could care less. The 2020 fires are consistent with historical fires, and it turns out they burned in locations that also burned in the 1900s and all the way back to the 1850s. So none of the events of 2020 are necessarily surprising from a historical perspective. Uh, with all that said, though, we also know that 2020 was anomalously dry. Fires on the west side of the Cascades are just a different animal than the ones we're more accustomed to on the east side. In some ways, it's not even a climate change question because it's the things we're talking about were in the past and that's just part of how this landscape works. I first met these scientists in 2019 on the site of the 52,000 acre Norse Peak Fire being used in multiple ways to study the way west side fires work. That fire started on the east slope of the Cascades and was blown over into western Washington. The big fires that shape the landscape here in western Washington are a little bit like earthquakes. This is just another one that may not be on people's radar as much here on the west side. The fires tend to be rare, but they tend to be large. And so that's what, you know, keeps some people, you know, concerned. Nick Bond is Washington State's climatologist who is also involved in the east wind study. This is not necessarily that there's going to be more of these east winds, but when they come along, this is what the landscape is going to look like. And that, um, you know, there's the potential, that much greater potential for extreme fires. Even if the number of east wind events stays the same, there is more opportunity for those east winds to cause damage because there are simply more fires on the western Washington landscape. In many ways, this is a numbers game. The latest census finds there are close to a million more people living in Washington than a decade ago. Since humans caused most wildfires, we're also seeing a record number of fire starts in 2021, a third of them on the west side, just waiting for an east wind. Certainly a good reminder, we all need to be doing our own part just to make sure that we're not letting those fires get started.